We just saw the sodium current that underlies the action potential depolarization phase. Let's now look at the potassium current that underlies the action potential repolarization phase. Here is the potassium channel of the action potential. Here is the plasma membrane, and the potassium channel is a protein made up of a sequence of amino acids. And you recognize here the uh, six uh, transmembrane segments, the P-loop, or loop, but it's quite different from the uh, sodium channel because you have only one domain. So to get the potassium channels, you need four of these subunits. Here, for example, you see the channel one, two, three, four of these subunits that fold together to make a central pore. And when the membrane is depolarized, the pore opens and potassium ions exit the cell. We just saw a sodium current that underlies the action potential depolarization phase. Let's now look at the potassium current that underlies the action potential repolarization phase. To record the unitary potassium current, we use the outside-out configuration to get a small piece of membrane under the pipette and voltage clamp mode to record a current. We add in the bath sodium and calcium channel blockers because we don't want here to record something else than a potassium channel. Here we hold the membrane at minus 80 millivolt and we apply depolarizing steps of increasing amplitude. What do we record? When the membrane is at minus 50 millivolt, we record an outward current. You see here, it's a positive current, it's an outward current. An outward current is a movement out of the cell of positively charged ions. And the amplitude of this current is quite small, 0.5 picoamps. At minus 30 millivolts, you see here the outward current. Here, I, and again here. Minus 10, you have an outward current during the whole depolarization with some closing here appearing in the middle. And the same for plus 20, the current is larger. And you see here at the channel, closes, reopens, closes, reopens, etc., etc. So it's quite different from the sodium channel. First, it has a long opening delay. Here you see the time scale, 20 milliseconds. So here the delay is quite long. It's variable, but it's quite long. You see here a long, long delay. Second, the uh, current here lasts much longer than the sodium current. It means that the channel opens for a long time, closes, and is able to reopen, which was not seen for the sodium channel. So we say that this channel has two states, the closed state and an open state. To open the channel, you need to depolarize the membrane and to, and it closes in, uh, briefly when the membrane is still depolarized, but to close definitely, you need to repolarize the membrane. So this channel does not inactivate and this explains why the current is, has a long, long duration during the uh, depolarizing step. So if we summarize, this channel has a delayed of activation. The amplitude of the potassium current is stable for a given voltage. Here, for example, you have the same amplitude of the current for a given voltage. You have variable opening duration. You see here that you have a very long duration or smaller duration, and multiple openings per voltage step. And only two channel states, closed and open, this channel does not inactivate. Let's have a look now at the IV curve. So here the same experiment as before. We have steps of increasing amplitude, and we are going to build the curve all together. So here at minus 650, it's an outward current, so it's a positive current, and uh, around 0.5 picoamps. So plus minus 50 here, around 0.5 picoamps. At minus 30, it's a little less than 
minus 30 here, a little less than one picoamp. At minus 10, it's a little more than one picoamp, minus 10 here. You can see 1.5, 1, something like that. And at plus 20, here, it's nearly two. And we, if we trace the curve, it's a straight line. Remember the equation, it's i k, it's a lower case uh, k, uh, i, i k equals gamma k, the, the conductance of the potassium channel, multiplied by the driving force. So where is the equilibrium potential here? We don't see it. So to see it, we have to trace the curve up to here. So it's around minus 80 millivolt, minus 90. Uh, why we cannot see it directly, we cannot um, see the reversal of the current directly? Because at, the, at that potential, so below here, so all the potentials is here, in this range, very negative ones, the channels are, are closed. So we cannot measure the reversal potential. We have to do it th theoretically with the curve.